Minsmere is particularly blessed with adders. There are adders all around here. Let's just have a look at adders and remind ourselves what they look like. Here we go. The uh, female adder tends to be brown and white. The black adder is a much darker. There, that's a male. That's a male adder, which is more sort of black and white. We're back to a female now. Beautiful patterns. They've got that zigzag marking down them. And actually, they're not that big. They're only about 50 centimetres long or, or about 24 inches in old money. Now, I'm going to become an adder. Now, imagine, over winter, the adder spends its time in hibernation. Do you know what? It's not called hibernation, it's called brumation, because cold-blooded animals, like adders, do it in a slightly different way from warm-blooded that do hibernate. Anyway, I'm brumating, comes from the Latin, brum, for winter. Uh, I'm brumating here, underneath these logs, and then I emerge, and along I come, and the very first thing that I do is this. I get down and I start basking. I spread myself out to absorb the rays of the sun. Now, Adders don't bask just to warm up for their own pleasure. It's a crucial part of their lives. But for male adders, like these, they have to bask so that the sperm, their metabolism speeds up and the sperm develops inside their bodies. The females have, um, the females have their eggs to develop as well. Now, this is fascinating. When the males uh, are, are trying to find the female, like this, when they're trying to find the female, they, they actually fight with one another like this. This is adder dancing. Very, very rarely seen. What happens is that they smell the female and they come along after her. And if two males meet, they'll wrap themselves round each other and they'll try and wrestle each other down to the ground. That's the adder dance. Very rare to see. I've seen it here twice, actually. Now, if dancing is rare to see, imagine mating. Now, I never thought I'd see this, but when I was here, literally, on this path the other day, I met Jamie and Joe. I said I'd never seen Alice Matey. They said, we filmed it the other day, just over there. We said, could we use it, please? And they said, yes, here it is. Now, here are the adders mating. Again, you can see the male is the black one and the female, and they're joined together. And adders have what's called a hemipenis, the males. It's split into two. They have two penises. adders mating, rarely seen. Now, after the adders have done their mating, they haven't fed, remember, all the whole of the time that they've been bromating. So now they're extremely hungry after mating and they have to go out and look for something to eat. And we filmed this. Here is the adder coming into a goldfinch nest. Now, it doesn't look to begin with as if there's anything in there, but there are chicks, and I'm afraid they're just lying low. The adder can smell them, and that's it. Sorry, it's a little bit gruesome. That's a chick being taken out now. The adder has to feed. It, it doesn't need all that much. Some people say they only need sort of nine or ten voles or chicks in there the whole of the summer to keep them going. Now, how do they move around these adders? Where are they? They're so hidden all the time. I wanted to find out how they move around here at Minsmere. And I got in contact with Darren Nash from the Durrell Institute. And believe it or not, the technology is so incredible now, the little radio trackers can be fitted onto adders. This is what we did. Oh, I like your danger sign on it. That's great. Taking no chances. So it looks like a female. Wow. There you go, yeah. She's a good size. She looks quite stout. She is. She's, she's pregnant, as it were? Yes, I do. Yeah, she is gravid. She's quite calm, isn't she? Seems to be. She is Would still... you say that's a calm animal? Or... Yeah, well, to be honest, most adders are. Yeah. There's this impression that they're, a, they're sort of a monster. It's, it's simply not the case. Gosh, what a treat. Smelling there, tongue flicking out to taste the air. And the pupils in the eyes tend to make her look quite fierce. But as you can see, she's being remarkably calm, very relaxed. We weighed her and identified her, and then it was time to attach the tracking device. Uh, and when you do this work, Darren, what scientifically are, are, are you looking for? What, what are you trying to solve? 
It's only recently we've started looking at the movements of adders, and it, recent studies have shown how far they actually move. That throws up the problem of development. What happens when a road or a rail or a house goes in between ah. the animal and its, its areas that it needs to either forage in or hibernate in? Of course. So that's what we're looking at primarily. With the tag secure... Just leave her there. ..we release her exactly where we found her. And later that day, we radio tagged one more female and two males. There you go, lovely. Science in action. Now, we had one more tag left, the fifth tag, and we've managed to attach it to this female. You can tell she's female. Look at the She's very, very calm. You can see she's smelling the air there. I'm wearing these special gloves, which uh, would protect me if she was inclined to bite me. But look on the back. Can you see? There is the tiny radio transmitter and that surgical tape that's holding it on and glow. And with this, we can actually track this female. I'm going to let her go exactly where we found her. And let's let her go off. There we go. She's quite cool now because it's cooled right down, so she's a little bit sluggish. Anyway, when you come back, what we're going to do, be very careful I don't tread on her, when you come back, we're going to see exactly where all the adders that we put these radio trackers on have been moving around the Minsmere site. And it's fascinating to see where they've been going. Chris, Michaela. Remember, we have managed to radio collar five, five now, adders here at Minsmere and I'm going to try, if I can, to actually track one of them right now. OK. That's a bit hissy. I'm worried that it's not on the right one. Oh, yes. Very hissy. I don't know if you can hear that. If I go away... I think it's picking up from the light. It's hissing, but you can hear it beeping. And as I get closer... There's a female adder right in here. Now, we've been tracking these adders for the past five days. And we can show you something absolutely fascinating. This is cutting science, this is. Now, the female that's just down in front of us there, she's in blue. That's exactly where we are right now. And in the last five days, she has only moved about two metres from where we are now. But the red dots here are a male, and he has moved an enormous... about 110... He did 110 metres here in a single day. So, for some reason, the females are sitting incredibly tight, like this one, and the males are moving enormous distances. Why on earth would that be? Well, that's because the female must now protect herself. She must hide here because she's pregnant. She'll give birth eventually. So she'll just kip, hunker down here and avoid predators. Um, and then the male, however, he's hungry. He's got to go out and, and feed as hard as he can now. Here's a male. Remember, it's black and they'll be out actively hunting. So he's out actively hunting, the females are not. They're just lying there and waiting for the voles to come to them. Let me cards. <laughs> Thank you very much. So there's a lovely, lovely little bit of science. I've got this round my neck. We, of course, will be keeping track of our adders because we know that they like to go to the bird's nest. We saw that last year. There's a wren's nest over there, quite close to one of the adders we're tracking. There's a long-tailed tit nest over there that also is within the adder's territory. So we'll keep monitoring. And big thanks to the Suffolk Amphibian and Reptile Group who've helped us track every day the positions of these adders.